Do you remember the Valley of the End? It was a large landmark to the Hidden Leaf and was the location of many battles between Indra and Asura's reincarnations. The place was formed during the legendary battle between Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha, the latter of which was using the Nine Tails coated in his Susano, all while Hashirama used his wood release to fight back. After the battle, Madara was seemingly killed and Hashirama sealed the Nine Tails into his own wife to safeguard it. This led to his crusade to capture the rest of the roaming beasts and sell them to the other nations under his brother's guidance. The land was scarred by the battle, and two statues were erected to remember the battle between the two greatest shinobi that changed the world. But that's not the only battle that occurred here, and today we will talk about one centering around Sasuke and Naruto instead. Mark out the symbol on your forehead protector and ready your cursed seal of heaven, because today we're gonna kill Naruto. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm certain you know the story. Two boys with a rather traumatic childhood meet each other in the academy, Sasuke and Naruto. Sasuke, besides Itachi, was the last surviving member of the Uchiha clan, and Naruto was the secret son of the fourth Hokage, as well as the host of the Demon Fox that had nearly destroyed the leaf years earlier. Due to similar experiences, Naruto and Sasuke naturally understood each other. Naruto tried to befriend Sasuke, but Sasuke was a cold and distant child, whose experiences with his elder brother had caused him to wander down the path of darkness and hatred. Sasuke was, in a way, the complete opposite to Naruto similar in every way, but a mirror to him. From how people treated them, to how they viewed life, even down to the color of their hair and way of carrying themselves, Naruto and Sasuke were yin and yang. Naruto was alone and craved attention, someone to care about him and be his friend. He acted out as a prankster, which is natural to a child who seeks attention. After all, it's better to get bad attention than none at all. And Sasuke was someone who had people, especially girls, coming out of the woodwork just to become his friend or more. He had people fawning over him due to his looks, personality, and in some cases, skill, something he and Naruto also stood opposite of. But unlike Naruto, all Sasuke wanted was to be left alone. He didn't want friends, he didn't want a love interest, he didn't want attention. All he wanted was power. Power to supplant Itachi. Power to take vengeance on the one responsible for his family's death. Power to bring that clan back, and the power to protect it. While uninterested in relationships, Sasuke did have a healthy respect for Naruto due to how similar he was in background. Naruto could understand pain and suffering, and while they were far from actual friends, they were rivals. Rather one-sided with a Sasuke advantage, but rivals nonetheless. Eventually, the two graduate from the academy and the rest is history. Naruto becomes Hokage, Sasuke becomes his supporting shadow, and the Uchiha clan sees itself being reborn in Sasuke, Sakura, and their daughter Sarada. The Hidden Leaf prospers, but what would have happened if things went down a different path? It all starts with Team 7. Kakashi introduces himself and they all speak of their dreams. Sasuke wants to kill Itachi and recreate his clan, Naruto wants to become Hokage, and Sakura wants to marry Sasuke. But something is different in this Sasuke. The Sasuke in our little AU is darker, meaner, he's single-minded in his goal, and no level of respect of anyone will stop him. The Land of Waves arc begins and everything remains the same. Sasuke trains beside Naruto, but Sasuke's only goal is to achieve strength. He doesn't care if Naruto has a rivalry with him or not. Sasuke and Naruto are fighting Haku, but he doesn't step in to save Naruto. He honestly doesn't care if Naruto dies, he just wants to accomplish a single goal, and this team is nothing more than a means to an end. Naruto of course survives their encounter with Haku, but he's incapacitated. The tuning exams occur and this is the best way for Sasuke to prove himself. He breezes through the written exam. The forest of death occurs the same way and Sasuke is branded with the cursed seal of heaven. He finds the power to be well worth the pain he went through to grow it after Orochimaru bit him. He would partake in the exhibitions and everything goes the same down to his training. Sasuke would eventually decide to join Orochimaru and he'd leave the village, meeting up with the Sound 4. He'd be drugged and canned by the Sound 4 like a power-hungry pickle and be out for quite a few hours until the Sound 4 are stopped by the Sasuke recovery team. Sasuke cares very little for the Sound 4. Having just come off a battle with Naruto where he nearly killed him with the Chidori, Sasuke would be ecstatic that he has finally surpassed Naruto and is well on his way to power. 
He runs off to finish the journey to Orochimaru, passing through the Valley of the End where he's stopped by Naruto, who's adamant about bringing him back to the village. Naruto begs Sasuke to come back to the village and tells him that Orochimaru will steal his body, but Sasuke doesn't care to listen. Naruto then decides to bring Sasuke back by force, but as they begin to fight, it becomes painfully clear that Sasuke is attacking to kill. In response to this, Naruto uses his tailed beast cloak to face off against Sasuke and manages to scratch his forehead protector. As the two of them fight, the clashing of the Chidori and Rasengan creates an energy dome. When the energy dome dissipates, Naruto lies defeated. However, Sasuke's anger and bloodlust is not yet slaked. In his anger, he puts a kunai through Naruto's heart, killing him. Sasuke recognizes what he's done for a second and then shakes his head and flees the area. There's no turning back now. He just killed his teammate. There's no returning to Konoha. Meanwhile, the recovery team would make it to the Valley of the End. There they would spot Naruto floating on the surface of the water, red blood floating about him. Neji comes closer to him to see if he's still alive. He lowers his head and knows it's too late. They would return to the village with his body. The saddest thing is that most of the villagers either don't notice Naruto's death or don't care. Some are even happy. Sakura is not happy, however. She's grief-stricken. She feels like this is her fault for making Naruto promise to bring Sasuke back, and all that is brought upon Naruto is death. She can't believe that Sasuke would do such a thing, and Kakashi is shocked as well. This is where part 2 occurs. It's around this time that word reaches Konoha that the Kazakage has been kidnapped. Sakura is sent along with Kakashi to Sunagakure along with Team Guy. There she meets Tamari. They catch up after a while and Sakura informs Tamari of the loss of Sasuke and the death of Naruto. Tamari laments this as Naruto was the one who changed Gara's path and could truly understand her brother. Now Naruto is gone. When they reach the village, they're informed that Konkuro has been poisoned in an attempt to rescue Gara from Sasori, and none of the medics can heal him. Sakura steps up to the plate though, she has, after all, trained under Tsunade. She removes the poison from his body and manages to create an antidote that even catches the eye of Chiyo, who then decides to follow Sakura and Kakashi. They find a piece of clothing that belonged to Sasori and attempt to use it to track him. However, Itachi and Kisame are sent to dispose of Team Kakashi and Team Guy. Kakashi and Sakura, along with Chiyo and Tamari, face off against Itachi. The battle is close, but Sakura manages to get a clean shot on him after he's distracted by Kakashi's clone. Meanwhile, Team Guy face off against Kisame. However, upon defeat, it's revealed that those that they fought were shape-shifting copies. This had merely been done in an effort to buy time. When they do reach Gara, he would already be dead. They face off against Sasori, and it mostly goes the same. As for the battle between Kakashi and Deidara, Tamari is there, but they're unable to stop Deidara from escaping. That being said, Gara's body is taken as well, and he's unable to be revived by Chiyo. The Konoha Shinobi return home, ashamed that they were unable to complete their mission. But they did get some intel about a meeting between the Akatsuki and Orochimaru. Kakashi is still in the hospital from the last battle, and so Yamato is assigned to Team 7 as its new leader for the time being. Sai is also assigned to the team to help them bounce back. In truth, he was sent to assassinate Sasuke. They reach Tenchi Bridge, and their new team leader, Yamato, disguises himself as Sasori. When the informant, Kabuto, appears, he's quickly able to distinguish that Yamato is not the real Sasori, and both he and Orochimaru attack the team. He would insult Team 7, especially Sakura, about her love for Sasuke, and he would mockingly tell her that the only person who would have Sasuke's body is himself. They would fight, but Naruto's not there to fight Orochimaru to a standstill. Instead, it's Sakura who, while possessing of strength, is not yet considered anywhere close to the fourth stage tailed beast mode level like Orochimaru could be. This would mean that she'd be unable to do much against him, and even if she and Kabuto switched targets, it wouldn't turn out very well. However, the battle would still end in the same way when Sai attempts to join up with Orochimaru under the guise of helping him destroy Konoha. Orochimaru and Kabuto would leave the bridge and take Sai with them back to their base. Everything goes mostly the same until Sai reaches Sasuke. Originally, Sai was moved by the bonds that Naruto and Sakura had with Sasuke. He no longer has that holding him back. Sai would instead attempt to assassinate Sasuke as was his mandate, but Sasuke had truly gotten stronger and survives the attempt and then turns on Sai. After a short but visually stunning battle, which I can't really convey through words, use your imagination, Sasuke comes out utterly on top and kills Sai. Meanwhile, Sakura and Yamato would catch up. After another brief battle with Sasuke, Sakura and Yamato found themselves defeated. There are two ways this could go. The first way is that Sasuke flat out kills them, but the second is that they manage to last long enough that Orochimaru pulls Sasuke out of the battle much like before. 
Given that Sakura is currently our main character, it would sort of suck to kill her off, so let's give her a smidge of plot armor to save her. They would then return to Konoha where they would report back to Tsunade about their failure and inform her of the death of Sai. During the time after, Sakura realizes that Sasuke is her responsibility and that she needs to be the one to take care of him, but she also realizes that she's too weak. Given that she has yet to complete her strength of 100 seal, she needs to work on something else to grow stronger. Under Kakashi's guidance, she begins to work on learning various other techniques, such as Rasengan. Kakashi could have taught her the Chidori, but due to her lack of Sharingan, it's unlikely she could handle the speed that came with the technique. He continues to train her and decides to focus on her affinity, which is Genjutsu. He would continuously put her under Genjutsu and allow her to wake up, teaching her and allowing her to learn for herself how to spot Genjutsu and how to cast it efficiently herself. Then they get informed that Asuma has died fighting Hidon and Kakazu, and they're summoned to a funeral. Team 10, currently led by Kakashi, would head out to fight Kakazu and Hidon, with Sakura and Yamato following not far behind. The fight goes about the same as before, except with the added help of Yamato and Sakura, things begin to turn in the favor of the heroes in a more timely fashion. Hidan would be defeated by Shikamaru in the same way as before, and through the use of her newly trained genjutsu techniques, Sakura would manage to keep Kakazu distracted while Kakashi managed to take out each of his hearts, until none were left, sealing his fate. Elsewhere, Sasuke would kill Orochimaru, believing there is nothing more he can learn from the weakened Sanin. Word of this reaches Konoha, and they decide to search for Sasuke, but before they can, they're stopped when Kurama finally regenerates after the death of Naruto, and proceeds to run amok in the Hidden Leaf Village. Sasuke would find Itachi and attempt to kill him, but Itachi would succumb to his illness before that could happen. Kakashi, using his Sharingan, manages to pacify Kurama for just long enough to keep him from killing any more people. Realizing this could be just what the Leaf needs to get one over on Akatsuki, as well as the chance to finally gain enough strength to face Sasuke, Sakura offers to become the next Jinchuriki of the Ninetales. After some deliberation and plenty of arguing, they decide to follow Sakura's request, stealing Kurama into her using the same 8 trigram seal that Naruto and Kushina Uzumaki had used. Sakura quickly begins to train with Yamato in the best ways to control her new power. She focuses on merely controlling it. She can't completely rely upon the Ninetales power since she's still a fresh Jinchuriki and has zero experience dealing with it. But the one thing she does manage to do is use the Tailed Beast's Chakra to quickly finish forming her own Strength of 100 seal. Having heard that the Ninetales was regenerated and had been subsequently sealed into a new host, Pain decides to make his move. The Animal Path is once more thrown into the village and summons the other paths to its side. Their goal, locate Sakura Haruno and retrieve the Ninetales. Sakura is informed to stay hidden, but as the battle drags on, Shizune finds her mind red, and the location of Sakura is revealed. Coming out of hiding, she realizes that the best she can do is face off against Pain and try to aid in pushing him back. Sakura would search for Tsunade just after the village was devastated by the Shinra Tensei. She'd find Tsunade and would manage to save her from one of the paths by using her strength of 100 Rasengan. She'd begin facing off and destroying the other paths of Pain until she reaches the Diva Path. She's captured by Diva and is prepared to be transported, but at the last moment she partially opens the seal holding Kurama back and ascends to her tailed beast state and proceeds to fight. Eventually, the Diva Path would lock her in a Chibaku Tensei to hold her, but the seal fails even further and she emerges from it in her eight-tailed mode that is nearly the completed form of Kurama. The nine-tails eight-tailed mode chases after the Diva Path and upon catching up with him manages to squeeze the body until it's utterly destroyed. At this time, Sakura is barely holding together, doing everything in her power to keep the seal from failing any further. Eventually, Yamato would return to the village from his hunt for Kabuto, and he would attempt to use that ridiculously named technique, Hokage-style 60-year-old technique, Kakuan entering society with bliss-bringing hands. Try saying that three times fast. About 10 wood pillars would surround the beast to hold it still, and Yamato would approach and place his hand bearing the kanji for sit on its forehead to restrain the tailed beast. Sakura would be returned to her human form. She was exhausted, but the mission wasn't over. She picked up one of the chakra rods from the remains of the diva and tried to track it back to its host. Alongside Yamato and the newly returned team Guy, they'd track down Nagato. Together with her five compatriots, they'd put an end to Nagato. With this finish, the battle would end, but it would not be without its losses. The majority of the civilians were killed, and the same was true for Kakashi and Shizune. To top it all off, Tsunade was comatose. The end result of this meant that Danzo succeeded Tsunade as Hokage for the time being. However, there wasn't much left of the Hidden Leaf to be Hokage over. However, they received help from the Land of Waves, a bit of a thank you from Inari and Tazuna after Team 7 managed to defend them. Inari would be crushed to hear that Naruto died, but he's inspired by the life he lived. 
A summit is then called for all the Kage to gather in the Land of Iron. Danza would attend, and most everything goes as usual except for Naruto stopping the Raikage to beg pardon for Sasuke's actions. Naruto can't do that because he's dead now. Maybe we should rename the series Sakura Shippuden. Just like before, Sasuke crashes the party, Raikage cuts his own arm off, Tobi declares war, and Sasuke kills Danzo. Sakura, however, is not here to attempt to assassinate Sasuke because she doesn't have the motivation to protect Naruto like she had in the original series. So, due to this, Karin would die from blood loss, and Sasuke would leave to take the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan that he would achieve by transplanting the eyes of his brother, Itachi. With Danzo dead, Konoha is now leaderless, and so the elders choose Might Guy to be the sixth Hokage. There are other options, perhaps better options, like Hiyashi Hyuga or something, but just give me this. I need to see Might Guy bring his eternal springtime of youth into the Hokage's office, alright? So, Hokage Guy gives orders to put Sakura into hiding, and she's taken to an island where she'd meet Killer B, the Jinchuriki of the Eight Tails. Under his guidance, she begins to train to control Kurama. First, she needs to conquer the darkness in her own heart before she can deal with the darkness Kurama would bring to the table. She sits before a waterfall and meditates, only to find herself face to face with a dark-eyed doppelganger with the words Inner Sakura scrawled on its forehead. It represents all the darkness within her heart. It begins to tell her she's useless, that she could never amount to anything Sasuke and Naruto were, how she let feelings for Sasuke get in the way and that she was too weak to stop him from leaving. It reminds her that if she had done anything more than cry that day, she might have managed to stop Sasuke from leaving the village. And if he had never left the village, then Naruto would not have had to follow him and maybe Naruto wouldn't have died. Sakura would nod in agreement. Everything this inner Sakura was saying were things that she had said to herself for years. This darkness was nothing she had not seen before. It had been merely given form. She would look into it with tears in her eyes and speak, You're right. I have been useless. I was too concerned with my feelings for Sasuke that I couldn't bring myself to hurt him, even if it meant stopping him from leaving the village. And because of my weakness, Naruto died. If I had been stronger, a lot of people would still be alive. She had that guilt inside of her, and she didn't know if she could ever shake it. Killer B reminds her that the guilt and feelings of uselessness were exactly what was holding her back. She needed to accept the past as something she could not change, but she shouldn't carry it into the future. She needed to forgive herself for the what-ifs of the past. It was not Sakura who forced Sasuke to leave, and it was not Sakura who killed Naruto. All she had ever done was ask them to stay with her. To ask Naruto to do something that he was already going to do. She needed to forgive herself and live for the future, for the people who were still alive. To correct what had been done wrong. Sakura nodded. She smiled, and the darkness of her inner Sakura would fade. Killer B would lead her into a temple behind the waterfall, where he'd proceed to teach her how to pull Chakra from the Tailed Beast without going crazy. It had a kickback that the Tailed Beast may try to siphon her power too, but it would give her incredible energy reserves for the time being. She would master the technique quickly because, well, she's Sakura, and she's good at stuff like that. Just as originally shown, Kisame would emerge from Samehada, the sword which Killer B had claimed for his own as a trophy after his battle with him. Sakura and Killer B, along with Yamato, would fight him and manage to end him for good. While continuing to train, Sakura would learn of the Fourth Shinobi World War. Though she would understand why they kept her back, she would know that if she were on the front lines as well, she could help fight and save many lives. She wouldn't be able to forgive herself if she didn't help, especially because she was the cause of the war. She would manage to escape the island with Killer B and head for the battlefield. Sakura and Killer B would be stopped by the Raikage and Tsunade. Sakura would rush over for a hug, glad to see Tsunade was fully recovered. Tsunade would ask what she was doing here, and Sakura said that she came to help fight. The Raikage would deny her and tell her that she couldn't, but after a quick back and forth, Tsunade would vouch for her student, and they'd continue on. Sakura is informed about the Zetsu army, as well as the impure reincarnated warriors that they're facing. Sakura would help deal with the Zetsu that infiltrated the United Shinobi forces, and she would then encounter Nagato and Itachi. Unfortunately, Itachi had never planted his crow on Sakura, so he would not be able to use Koroa Matsukami to free himself from Kabuto's control, so he'd remain an enemy which also means the only way to defeat them both is to use sealing techniques to stop them. Most everything up to this point remains the same, except Sasuke and Itachi never meet up, meaning Sasuke would not have a chance to talk to his big bro about his genocidal tendencies, and would also not be able to convince Kabuto to stop the impure reincarnations from fighting. And so, the battle would remain rather tough for our heroes. Eventually though, they'd break through and make it to the ghetto statue. Meanwhile, Sasuke shows up on the battlefield, intent to help Madara achieve his goals. With Sasuke there, it becomes a make or break moment. Since Sasuke is a villain, he and Orochimaru never team up and reincarnate the previous Hokages, which means that Sakura absolutely cannot lose Ninetales or she's dead. 
This means that she must take out the villains before the Ten Tails is reborn or the world ends. The reason why is because at least one elite soldier who was needed to defeat Obito is not here. That's right, Kakashi isn't here. And because Kakashi isn't here, it would be next to impossible to harm Obito since there's nobody here to use Kamui to help land attacks. On top of that, Sasuke is here and he has complete control over his Amaterasu, which means that he can just look at you and you're dead. And given that there isn't much strain for the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan, he can just keep doing it as long as his chakra holds out. And that's not to mention that Madara Uchiha is here, the same man who utterly destroyed the 4th Division all by his lonesome. That being said, it's not likely they'd be able to be beaten by Sakura. She'd more than likely be stripped of her tailed beast, which would result in her death. B would also be stripped of his tailed beast, and the ten tails would be restored. It would be absorbed by Obito, who would use it to cast the infinite Tsukiyomi, and put the entire world under his genjutsu to create a perfect world. Maybe he'll create one where Naruto doesn't die in the Valley of the End, because this is a total bummer. So, what do you think? I made Sakura the lead when Naruto died, and I think she did pretty well. She didn't manage to stop the Akatsuki, but she didn't do half bad. She lost quite a few people who were instrumental to the ending, such as Kakashi, and without him, it's not likely that she could overcome Obito's Kamui. But then again, few people can replace Naruto in this series, so I think she did well with what she had. What are your thoughts on the matter? What do you think would have happened if Sasuke killed Naruto at the Valley of the End? Would things go differently? Be sure to tell us in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to also give the video a like to show support for the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to ring the bell to be notified of the videos we tend to drop every day. Peace out, compadres.